remember this video, KISS, keep it simple. I talked about keeping it simple when photographing jumpy spiders and we used a, uh, a paper texture to photograph uh, jumpy spiders and getting results like this one here. In that video, I also mentioned that you can use some material to put your jumpy spider on to photograph. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. I have a link in the description to the website where you can get all these from if they're available and in stock. Some of them go out of stock quite quickly. So if you do see them in stock and you want them, snap them up as quickly as possible. Now the first item I want to talk about is this one here. And this is the first one I had. This is like a makeup scrubber. So you use it to take makeup off your face. You can wash it and clean it, all the usual stuff. However, if you put a jumping spider on, you can get an image like this. The downside is it was a little bit small, but then when I looked on the website, I found some other items that we can use. Another one I have is a microwave hottie. Now, obviously I'm not gonna use it for that. What I can do is I can crack this open, take the beans out, and I can put that on my hand. So we can have a jumper on there and we can manipulate it and turn it around. So as the jumper is moving, we can keep it moving around. So it's always on that beanie unless it jumps off, which is sometimes problematic as anyone who's tried photographing these little chaps will know. We can also use something like this. This is an eye mask. So again, we're just using the texture of the eye mask to photograph the jumpy spider. So these ones are my favorite items to use at the moment for this very simple technique. And these are makeup removers. So they are fully washable. You use them to remove the makeup off your face. However, what I like about these, and if I get this one out here, is you can place your jumping spider on and it's got a large area for it to run around. You can turn it around. So if your spider's running towards the edge or towards your light, like they do sometimes, they're crazy little things. But sometimes they run towards you. You can turn it around give it more space. You can also put something on underneath at the back to create a seamless texture or a seamless background. And they are fantastic for that. So what I wanna do now is I wanna stop rambling and actually show you this technique with one of my jumping spiders. So we're going to use the uh, the light blue, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the light blue. I'm actually liking the light blue at the moment. And there's different colors. We got like a, a black one. A black one would work good on a pale jumping spider. Again, we're always looking for contrast in our jumpy spider images. So if you've got a dark spider, you want a lighter background. If you've got a pale jumper, you want a dark background. I have my Fidipeus Comatus out here. It's a very small jumping spider. What he lacks in size, he makes up in personality. Okay, so I'm gonna place him here initially, just so you can see on the overhead exactly what's going on here. You can see as he's running around, we can manipulate the cloth. I would also suggest you take the tags off so they don't end up in the background so that way you can use whichever ray, whichever side of the cloth you want to. So if you get this happening where he won't keep still, just keep putting him back down because eventually he will keep still. Look, you see there? Now if I had my camera ready, I'd be able to snap a picture of him. But, uh, I can turn the cloth around and I'm actually ready to snap a picture. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put my chair away. Because what I like to do is to get down as low as possible. And because this cloth is larger than the eye cloth, we've got plenty of background to work with. You can see there how easy it is to take a nice picture of your pet jumping spider, simply by having some sort of material. So he's on the move now, look. So he's actually turned round and he's going to the left-hand side, my left-hand side. So all I gotta do is just turn this cloth around and he's already facing me again, you see? Wait for him to have a breather, like he is now. And again, we can scrump up the cloth. We can make different shapes, so it's, uh, it's not just flat if you don't want it flat. Let's try the pink one. Let's get him onto the pink one, shall we? Now to get him on there, I'm just gonna put the cloths together and coaxed him over. There he is, he's on the pink one now. And there you go, he's just stopped. No, he hasn't, he's gonna carry on. Turn him round again. So there we have a pink one. And again, if you wanna get down low, just get it towards the edge of your desk so that you're able to get the camera below the desk. There we go. And you can see how that's working out nicely. We've got like a darkish jumping spider but at the same time, we've got a light background, so he's starting to stand out. 
So that it is it. A makeup cloth remover and a jumpy spider makes for a pretty good picture. Here are some more images that I've taken using this exact technique. And again, as you can see, he's settled down. He's literally just sitting there now on the cloth. So if your jumper is running around, just keep putting him back. Eventually, he's going to settle down and just sit there. With the makeup cloth, there are two different textures. You've got a, uh, a rough texture and a softer texture on the back. You can change the look of your image by just turning the makeup cloth over. And of course, you're not limited to just using makeup removing cloths. You can use all kinds of different types of textures, all kinds of different fabrics. You don't have to stick with the colour you are with, you can also dye them like I have with this t-shirt here that I have dyed yellow. And here is the result from that t-shirt. But for me, my favourite at the moment is the makeup removing cloth. This technique works with wild jumpers as well. So these are going to be folded up and put into my camera bag. I can just fold it up. Takes up no room at all in the camera bag, so we're taking those out in the spring I see any wild jumpers, I can place them on there if I can't get the shot from where they are in the nature. Sometimes you just cannot get the shot. At least this way, I have an opportunity to take a picture of one, document the species and where I found it. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments and what you thought about the images in the comments below. But I shall leave it there. My name's Stuart Wood and again, I'll see you on the next video. So do you remember this video? No, that way, isn't it? I found some neat little items that can help. And it's a uh, erase your eyes. What is this thing? Okay. And I can put that. So what I want to do is I want to stop rambling now and I want to show you this. God damn it. So what I want to do now is I want to stop rambling and I want to show you this. Fucking hell. But what he makes up, but what he lacks inside, fucking hell, can't get my words out today, I can't. Here we go, he's lucky he's off, he's off already. <laughs> get back on there. Okay, and he's off again. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, you know, I've done this twice now and he's just sat there, yeah? But now the video, uh, the, the camera's recording, he's like, you know what, I'm just gonna play you up and not bother. So you can see there how he's just sitting there quite happily. He was. <laughs> now the video is done, he's, he's just sitting there literally. I could get a photo stack of like 20 images now, he's just sitting there. But now, when the video camera's running, he's running all over the place. You go, you know what, Stu? I'm going to prove you wrong.